the purpose of the Watershed Partnerships, they are basically um, a voluntary alliances between public and private landowners who recognize that working together collaboratively uh, across landscapes and um, landowner boundaries was the best way to achieve watershed protection. The Watershed Partnership started in East Maui in 1991, so over the last 25 years they've grown to encompass 10 active partnerships across the state. So if you included all the landowner boundaries, it includes about 2.2 million acres, so that's roughly half the land in the entire state. The partnerships um, have a memorandum of understanding that all the partners and landowners sign. Uh, they also identify priority areas and projects to work on within the watershed to help achieve watershed protection for water recharge, uh, biodiversity protection, and all sorts of other conservation measures. Um, so they each, each partnership has a coordinator and a field crew that work for the benefit of the partners themselves. So those are the boots on the ground, the people going out into the forest to protect um, the, native, the native flora and fauna, um, remove ungulates, control invasive weeds, um, inspect priority protection fencing projects that the state also helps fund. The protective fences, uh, DOFA and the state are interested in protecting what we consider priority watersheds. So those are the areas across the state that are the most critical for water recharge. They also usually have the highest um, percentage of biodiversity, unique flora and fauna, really rare and endangered plants as well. Um, so once we put a fence up, we want to make sure that we have zero ungulates within the unit within a certain amount of time. So ungulate removal is um, the main goal after you put up a fence. You also want to make sure that you're removing all the invasive weeds, things that could um, inhibit the native forest ability to capture and store water. So in the 1930s, the territorial foresters were concerned with the loss of watershed. And so there was a really big effort to fence off forests to replant with plants that they thought might be good for uh, forest production as well as for watershed value. And so they planted a bunch of eucalyptus and cook pine and things like that in order to try to um, regain the watershed value. And so what we're looking at now is um, some eucalyptus trees that were planted by them and remain as a uh, testament to their efforts back then. And it's kind of what we're trying to do now but now that we know that native plants are better for the watershed, we're planting with natives. The strawberry guava is a huge water sucker. And in addition to using a lot of water from the plant itself, it also changes the environment in a way that makes it so that not as much water soaks up into the ground. So you can see the smooth bark makes it so that the water just hits the ground really fast and hard. It doesn't have a chance to slow down. It results in a lot of erosion, so there's bare ground underneath the strawberry guava, so the water just runs off the mountain and takes soil with it and into the marine environment. And it also is a really prolific reproducer, so it has tons and tons of seeds and it spreads really fast. So we're standing at the summit of Mount Ka'ala in the Ka'ala Natural Area Reserve, and this is characterized as wet, cloud forest and it's largely intact native forests. There are very few invasive plants in here and it's a really good example of a healthy ecosystem and an ecosystem that catches and retains a lot of water for our aquifers. Well, water is really important for everyone who drinks water. <laughs> no, so, um, we, in Hawaii, we are an isolated landmass, and we really rely on our native forests and our forests in general to catch water and to slow it down so that it soaks into the ground and it recharges our aquifers so that we can then draw it out and use it for our everyday um, household and industrial uses. We rely very much so on what's coming out of um, the clouds and the sky, so fog drip, Anything that the native forest can capture, that includes rain that falls actually down into the soil. We want to make sure that we have the forest there that can absorb it and make sure it infiltrates into our aquifers.